So let's go to the next section and look into the the, the second variation, so the half cut uh, cell photovoltaic modules. So there are two different terms that are used to describe this variation in the physical appearance of these photovoltaic modules. So we normally refer to them either with the term half cut or half cell. And we'll call them that way because we basically take a photovoltaic cell, a square regular cell, we cut it in half so we get two rectangular cells and then uh, thereby we reduce the surface area of the cell by half so we've got half the amount of surface area and then we double the amount of cells per module uh, sounds a bit weird right why would you do that because now we also take all these cells and instead of one long string one long series connection of all the cells we actually couple them both in series and in parallel so why would you do this what would be the advantage of half cut photovoltaic modules so let's go to the whiteboard again and let me show you exactly what is being done and why you would do this and what can the advantages are of configuring your photovoltaic module in such a way. So in order to explain this topic as simple as and as clear as I can, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I want to take a regular full cell photovoltaic module, uh, kind of give you a refresher of how it's normally being wired, uh, and then compare that side-by-side -side by a half cell photovoltaic module and then I'll show you both the module next to each other so that it's very easy to compare them I think in this way it's easy to explain so if, let's first look at the full cell so the regular photovoltaic module so we have a frame we have a module and then in the module we take all the square photovoltaic cells and we place them all in an even pattern all the way through the module now we need to combine all these cells together so what do we do? We connect them all head to toe in a daisy chain in a series connection with each other. So we kind of make a, a snake-like structure whereby we connect all the cells together in one long string. So it's one continuous loop of solar cells. All the solar cells are connected to each other in one long configuration in the module. Now, if all goes well, if all the conditions are normal, there's no shading, you've got a full uh, bright sunlight on your module, everything is perfect, then the module is working perfectly fine. There's no problem. But let's say that you get a little bit of shade. There's a big leaf that falls on the module. Uh, let's assume it falls on the, the top left of the module. And it's a very big leaf, and that leaf is completely blocking the, the top four cells of the solar module. Now, this is a situation that we really want to avoid, but if it happens, you are blocking the operation of the those four particular cells. But as a result, uh, the complete string, so the whole string of all the cells, is actually also being blocked because the current that's running through all the other cells also need to run through these four cells. And well, without getting too much in detail, just believe me when I tell you that if a solar cell is completely blocked it doesn't want to allow any electricity to run through it anymore it's kind of like you you cut the connection there right so by blocking only a few cells one of only a few cells of the complete module you're actually impacting the overall performance and the whole panel is then negatively impacted um, so what they've done to kind of mitigate the negative impact from uh, very local shading of a module is that manufacturers they've installed bypass diodes. So typically what they do for these kind of modules is that they install one bypass diode for every two columns of solar cells, right? So they take the first two columns of the solar cells, they in install a bypass diode, and then if those first four cells are blocked by a leaf then what it's actually doing is saying okay i'm taking the first two rows completely out of operation so it's it's accepting that it's losing one third of the power output of the panel but the other two third of the panel so the other two sections will be operating at its full performance under the given uh, conditions right so you're losing one third of the panel but the other two thirds are operating at 100 percent capacity under the, the, the given conditions. Now, uh, the same, of course, is true for the, the second section. So if you would get uh, any kind of blockage from one or more of the cells of the second section, then the bypass diode installed for the second section will kick in and will also redirect the current so that now only the second section 
is not performing, but the first and the third section are performing at its peak performance under the given uh, irradiance and temperature conditions. So that was a bit of a refresher of how a regular photovoltaic module works. So a regular photovoltaic module with square photovoltaic cells that are combined all in series, but whereby you have three individual bypass diodes that can mitigate the effect of, of local shading or local underperformance of specific solar cells in your solar module. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Now let's compare this to the, the half cell, so the, the variation that we're looking at at this subchapter. So we're taking the module again, we're taking the, the frame, and then instead of in, in the frame placing all these um, square photovoltaic cells, we're cutting these cells in half, exactly in half, whereby we're getting these rectangular, perfect rectangular photovoltaic cells, and we're placing them in two groups in the panel. So we're reducing the size, the surface area of the cell by half, but we're increasing the amount of cells by two. That's pretty straightforward, right? And now what we're doing is we're wiring both these two sections of the photovoltaic module, but we're wiring them in a way very similar to how we wired the, the regular photovoltaic module, right? So the top section is one continuous loop, one daisy chain connection of all the cells, so they're all connected in series. And we do the same for the lower section. So all these all this, uh, cells in the lower portion of the module, they're also connected all in series. And now what we're doing is we're taking these two sections of the module and we're connecting this in parallel, right? What you're, what you're looking at now, this is a connection of two sections of the module in parallel. The top section is all, all the cells are individually connected in series, all head to toe, all plus to minus. The bottom section is the same, and then we're taking the top and the bottom, and we're combining that in parallel. And now let's see what happens if we take the three bypass diodes. So we place three bypass diodes in the module. And as you can see, they're actually located, actually placed, placed somewhere in the middle of the module. Whereas with a regular module, the uh, diodes are placed some, normally placed somewhere at the bottom. Uh, at one side of the module. So we're taking the three bypass diodes, we're placing them in this configuration in the, the half cell photovoltaic module. And now let's see what happens if we get local shading or if we get some kind of malfunction or underperformance of one of the photovoltaic cells in this module. So let's assume we have a similar situation as we had with the full cell regular photovoltaic module. So we're getting some kind of local shading on the panel. So let's assume it's all the way at the top left on the on the module and we're getting some local shading whereby some of the cells all the way in the top there, they are not uh, operating anymore. And you know that therefore you're affecting the whole string. So the, all the other cells that are connected to those few cells as well. But now the first bypass diode will start to, will, will be activated and it will start to redirect the current. And you can see that as a result, that whole loop on the top left is not functioning anymore. It is not contributing anymore to the overall power output of the module. But the end result is that while you're getting a one local shading spot on the module, so you're getting some kind of a leaf or whatever on it, uh, now, instead of you losing one third of the power output of the panel as you had with the, the full cell regular photovoltaic module, now you're only losing one sixth, which is a considerable advantage because the it can happen due to something blocking the irradiation to the cell such as a leaf but what can also happen let's say the the next situation we due to some external inputs due to certain circumstances uh, a few of the cells at the top right side of the module are are broken they're cracked whatever there's something not working or maybe some of the connection in between the cells uh, have eroded or deteriorated and the result is that some of these cells are not functioning anymore. Well then again the bypass diode will kick in and only this part of the panel which probably will be damaged permanently uh, is not operating anymore and you still have five sixths of the panel which is still functioning properly. So that's one of the main performance advantages of operating a module in a way where all the cells are half cut and connected in a series and in parallel.
There are also a few other advantages of operating a module in such a, such a way. For example, if you would use the same wiring to connect all these cells together, if you'd use the same gauge size and you compare it between the full cell or the half cell. That actually means that as you're using the same links between all the cells, the same, same wiring size, you are actually carrying half of the amperage through the wires, right? Because uh, half of the amperage is going through the top section of the module and half of it's going through the bottom, which means that, and you probably know this, right? The uh, losses in efficiency, so the the inefficiencies of transporting electricity through your wires is directly linked to the amperage. The higher the amperage, the higher the losses. So therefore the overall efficiency of the module or the losses during transport of electricity through the module are substantially reduced if you're going for the half cell technology or the half cell configuration of a photovoltaic module. So now let's go online and compare what I've just explained to you in theory to a real life example of a half cut photovoltaic module. So I'm going straight back to a module that we looked at before. It was a uh, half cut cell module from Canadian Solar and remember I am not affiliated with Canadian Solar. Um, so here we can see, right, we've got a definition. It's high power. Uh, that's just say a relative term. Uh, you could say that it's got a relatively high power output compared to other panels due to its size. It's bifacial, we understand that. It's a polycrystalline panel, we understand as well. It's got the perk, the passivated em emitter rear contact, so that's great as well. A module, we understand the difference between a photovoltaic cell and a photovoltaic module. So that's great. And when we look at, let me zoom in a little bit here at the image, we can here see that the cells are all rectangular, right? They're not square, they are rectangular. And we can see that there's these three little boxes on the module. Uh, it doesn't say it, but I think it's safe to assume that these are three individual junction boxes whereby the internal wiring of the module, and again, it doesn't say it, but I think it's safe to assume, whereby the wiring here is as per what I've just explained to you on the whiteboard, right? Because you can see the two main connectors, the probably MC4 connectors, whereby you can connect these, this module to another module or wire it up to your charge controller. And then each and every small little black junction box will probably have its own bypass diode. Now what we can also do is we can scroll down a little bit towards the specification and we go here to the mechanical data section. So here we can see that uh, the junction boxes are ingress protection 68 and there are three diodes in the panel, right? So that's, that overlaps with what I just explained to you on the whiteboard. And you can see that the cell arrangement is 144 cells in series versus the, the regular number of 72. And they say it's two times 12 by six. Now let's scroll up again and let's look at the panel. So remember it's two times 12 times six, which makes sense because if you look at the top part, it is there are 12 rows and there's six columns, so 12 by six make 72 cells, and then they say, well, double that, right? So two times, 12 times six makes 144 half cut solar cells. Okay, so that was a real life example of a half cut photovoltaic module.